first of all, thank you very much for uh, coming this evening and, and uh, making your way through extremely hostile conditions uh, the tube and all the rest of it. Um, the reason we're doing these salons, as I said last time, before I introduce our very special guest, uh, is that we want here at the New Culture Forum to be the basis, actually, of like-minded people who can associate, get together, uh, at a time where, frankly, we need as much of our morale boosting as well as possible. There's nothing wrong in that. Uh, we need that because uh, we're not going to get it from anywhere else. And uh, it's very, very important that we associate as well together and get to know each other and make connections. Um, delighted that David here, who's been on our channel, uh, oh, I think it's three or four times now, um, and he's come to just address with us with a few words before he does um, I would just like to say that we've got a lot of our new members here and they've come from in some cases like Lincolnshire and places like this thank you very much for coming um, I you know your support means so much to us and this is extremely important um, you know that uh, your enthusiasm is incredibly important to us the new culture forum has actually been in Hungary uh, this past week, making a documentary about Hungary. So I'm delighted that we also have some members, uh, some people from the Hungarian Embassy. Where are they hiding? There they well, are. Petra is there. And Petra is there. Thank you very much. Hiding. Yes. Flamboyant. So we have our friends from the Hungarian Embassy. Wonderful time in Hungary, where I might add, uh, there is such a thing as a, a Scruton Cafe, um, which is where I bought this. I think it's very, very good. This is, uh, I think it's a pretty good likeness, actually. It's, very good it's not bad, like, yes. But can you believe, if we were in it needs a flag, would there be such a thing? It needs a cigarette in its mouth. <laughs> and a hunting Would there be such a thing as a Scruton Cafe? I don't think so. Anyway, one of the issues that's on our mind is the Ukraine. I think David's going to touch on this. Uh, so without further ado, th thank you very much, David. Thank you. Peter, ladies and gentlemen. I thought today we had to at least not fall far too short of events. It's very difficult to match them unless one were a Churchill. And Churchill, of course, got Putin long before everybody else. Churchill, uh, in his extraordinary biography, his great ancestor, the Duke of Marlborough, makes a wonderful analysis of Louis XIV as this combination of infinite mediocrity absolute violence at home and abroad and he captures perfectly and it is that analysis of Louis XIV that Churchill uses as the basis not only of his understanding of Hitler but many of the great speeches and phrases that are directed against Hitler and so it seems to me that far too much attention has been given in all this to analyzing the oddity of Putin. I don't think Putin is odd at all I think Putin falls into an absolutely characteristic type. On the other hand, of course, Putin is infinitely remote from our sense of values in the West now. He is an unashamedly deployer of power. That is the key to understanding in exactly the same way that, that Louis XIV was, that Hitler was. The idea of absolute power at home, absolute power abroad. The question as to whether they are mad or not simply seems to me to be redundant. They have a different way of looking at the world. Of course, set up with this figure of profound hostility, you know, Putin, somebody who we can all recognize as being mad and bad, or we think he's mad, he's actually just bad, we've then tended to identify the Ukrainians as being fundamentally like us. They're not. Absolutely not, it seems to me. Let's look at what's happened. Let's look at the incidents that have unrolled before us. First, of course, we have Zelensky himself emerging as a hero in a more than Churchillian mode. That extraordinary, off the cuff, I suspect, rather like Churchill's all the best, all, all <laughs> Churchill's best remarks, carefully rehearsed, I need ammunition not a ride, mm. remaining in the centre, dressed in fatigues, taking the risk of assassination, taking the risk of a stray rocket at the heart of things, 
This is Beowulf. This isn't now. This isn't now. And look at Whitehall here, this vast fortress designed to keep the dangerous thing called the citizen out. This is different, direct, infinitely, although it uses a great many foul words and I mean, he's whatever, whatever the Hungarian uh, uh, fuck is, I thought I was going to begin to learn it. He uses it so frequently. Although it's foul mouth, it is genuinely heroic leadership. And the scenes we've seen, women giving soldiers sunflower seed, mm. so that when they die, their bodies will at least be used and they produce a flower. And then the principal trope, people standing on bridges in isthmuses, knowing they're going to be killed and defiant. What world is this? Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's the world, isn't it, of... I tried to think, and then suddenly, does everybody remember? Do we still do at school? Does anybody still read Macaulay? Does anybody read The Lays of Ancient Rome? The extraordinary um, last Parcenus of Clusium by the seven gods he swore that the great house of Tarquin, Horatius at the bridge. Let me read. This is the great scene in which uh, the, uh, the, 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 the supporters of the kings of Rome are invading, attacking Rome itself. There's a single bridge. The army approaches. If they take that bridge, the city will fall. And one man, um, uh, Horatius, stands forward. And he steps forward and he confronts the cons consul and he says, Then outspoke brave Horatius, the captain of the gate, every man upon this earth death cometh soon or late how can a man die better than facing fearful odds for the ashes of his fathers and the temples of his gods and for the tender mother who dandled him to rest and for the wife who nurses his baby at her breast and for the holy maidens who feed the eternal flame to save them from false sextus that wrought the deed of shame who down the bridge sir count consul with all the speed he may I, with two more to help me, will hold the foe in play. In yon straight path, a thousand may well be stopped by three. Now, who will stand on either hand and keep the bridge with me? Isn't this what we've been seeing? Can you imagine the British army now doing the same? Can you imagine our navy that surrendered to a little inflatable in the Gulf. Do you not all recall that scene of absolute shame and surrender? And they weren't shot. In the 18th century, they would have been shot. Because cowardice, even especially of an admiral, especially of an officer, was punished by shooting. So they're different from us now. But those scenes you can replicate with every single moment of 18th century English history. Listen to Nelson. A sudden glow of patriotism was kindled within me and preserved in presenting king and country as my patron. Well, then I, explain, I exclaimed, I will be a hero and, and, and brave every, and by divine providence, brave every danger. I will be a hero. Go into Westminster Abbey. Go into particularly St Paul's. Look at those other heroes. Look at Wolf, who again dies uh, on the heights of Abraham uh, in the, that great moment of the Seven Years' War when Canada falls to the English. Look at the monument, the absurd, wonderful, preposterous monument to Captain Faulkner uh, in Westminster Abbey. Um, uh, where, uh, do you know what he did? He's 22. He has already been hailed, actually, with Handel. Hail the conquering hero comes when he single-handedly takes a French fort in 1794. In 1795, he's captain of a tiny frigate. A lot, much larger French vessel bears down on them and thinks it's going to crush them, so its bowsprit comes amidships. What does he do? He lashes the bowsprit to the capstan so he can then direct a permanent broadside into the ship which he takes and dies, of course, at the moment of victory, and there he is recorded. What are all these people fighting for? What are the Ukrainians fighting for? Are they fighting for 
the rule of law? Are they fighting for, um, what is it, the, an, uh, an international code of values? Are they fighting for um, a world order based upon the United Nations? Are they fighting for universal human rights? They're not. They're fighting for hearth and home and country. They are fighting, in, arguably, in the most primitive way. There is this sense of the rootedness in place, that passionate patriotism. Well, patriotism is a bit too weak a word, isn't it? There's a savagery about it. There is an absolute determination that anybody who trespasses, just like ancient Rome, anybody who trespasses on that territory is an enemy and to be destroyed. And it's interesting we have represented the Hungarian embassy here. I think I am right in saying Again, we've carefully suppressed what the nature of the Ukraine is, because we're all on their side. But it's not exactly a liberal country, as I understand it. The educational policies deny ethnic minorities the opportunity to be taught in their own languages beyond the age of nine. Right? This, is a, this is a reassertion and an imposition of a specific form of ethnic identity. These are deeply uncomfortable thoughts, aren't they? What we've got to address, it seems to me, is the, their sense of rootedness in their country, their sense of rootedness, don't use the word, in their race, their people, their sense of rootedness in their history. And these are very difficult questions, but I think they touch us profoundly. Because it's appropriate, we've got the bust of Roger Scruton here. A conservatism has fundamentally, and this is our terrible problem, a conservatism has fundamentally to be rooted in history and in the tradition of a country. It cannot be rooted in anything else. Roger and others tried to begin with to have a kind of universal conservatism that was rooted essentially in theology. In, in God as the idea and the origin of values. That will not work. What we've got to recognize, isn't it, as the Ukrainians do, there are no such things as universal values. There is no such thing as international law. There is no such thing as universal human rights. There are things which are specific to nations. Disraeli says it better than anybody else. A conservative party that is not a national party is nothing. We have to reconfront this. We have to re-understand it. And the only way you can now be a national party is with a particular address and understanding and comprehension of the history of your country. And of course, we are uniquely fortunate. Again, we must all have had that sense of, dare I say it, English exceptionalism. British exceptionalism, it's really English, uh, looking at those horrors of Eastern Europe and thinking that the last time there was anything comparable in England is the civil war in the 17th century. There is, there is English exceptionalism. We have had a society which is capable of a history which reconciles. Look around here. You have Charles I, a statue of him at the top of Whitehall, where the traffic was stopped when I tried to get here. And at the other end, you've got the statue of the man who executed him. You've got Cromwell. That sense of a history that can reconcile, that can hold together, that can encompass. And ladies and gentlemen, I think we need to learn from the Ukraine. We need, once again, to understand that this universalism simply does not work. A conservative cannot believe in universal values. Values are specific to a culture. Again, everybody talks as though there is a world community. That world that believes in rules is effectively Europe and the Anglosphere. 20% only of countries are democratic. Um, today, uh, Pakistan actually signs an agreement with Putin actually signs an agreement. In other words, we're deluded when we think 
that there is this, you know, this, this international world order, the uh, vital importance of the United Nations, the infinite absurdity of talking of summoning Putin before the International Court of Justice. All of this is the mere, it's utter unreality. If we are to survive as a nation, and I use that word very seriously, we have once again to address this question of belonging, identity, and nationhood, and an understanding, a welcoming, and comprehension of our history. And we've got to realize there are people who are real enemies of it. There is no doubt whatever that the whole of the BLM, the whole of critical race theory, has a single purpose. It is to delegitimate that history, which is the only basis for our, the existence of our society. Not for nothing is the Palace of Westminster built in the Gothic style. It's there to say we do not owe our history, we do not owe our freedoms to a specific moment, um, a specific moment of, of constitutional uh, uh, cre creation. It's saying those freedoms are intrinsic, they are immemorial, they have always been here. It's a myth, but it's not a very big myth, since literally, those freedoms, literally our political structure, literally the use of that building as, a, as, as the world's uh, mother of parliament, principal representative assembly, does go back to Magna Carta. We have to understand this, we have to use it, we have to propagandize it, and we have to tell people if we don't, we will fall. We will not do what the Ukrainians have done. We will not have that courage. We will not show that, that her heroism. There has to be, finally, as Roger, better than anybody else said, the foundation of political trust, the, the foundation of, of political alignment, is not rational. It is irrational. It is, it is a product of where you're born, the culture into which you were born. No sillier phrase has ever been written, as I always say, all bad ideas are French, but no sillier phrase has ever been written than that of Rousseau, man is born free. He's not. He's not. Think of Augustine. You're born with piss and shit. You are, you are absolutely helpless. You are dependent for years. You are a creature of your parents. All of those things that are listed by, by Macaulay there, the place you're born, the mother who rears you, the, 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 the woman you love and so on. You're a product of all of those things. So ladies and gentlemen, I do think we've got a lot of lessons to learn from what's, what's, what's happening in, uh, in, in the Ukraine. We've obviously got to, to learn the lessons that the world isn't safe, that there isn't a world order to which we can appeal. We've got to learn above all the lessons that other people of different values from us. And finally, and again, as conservatives, we should be willing to recognize this. No state can survive that can't defend itself. And the erosion of our armed forces, the rendering of ourselves utterly vulnerable uh, in terms of fuel and so on, is an act of folly that seems to me to be unforgivable. I'm not going to go back and recite dear old, uh, uh, dear old Macaulay again, but that sense of the man on the bridge attached to his country, to his place, not to some vast system of, of universal values, recognizing these different, not better, simply different. We as conservatives essentially have to depend on that specificity, that rootedness, that sense of place, of history, and of time. Hello. If you're enjoying the New Culture Forum channel and you believe in our mission, may I invite you to join our membership scheme at the link below or on our website, newcultureforum.org.uk. Our work is more important now than ever, and we have great plans ahead for the future, but we can't do it without your support. From as little as £3 per month, you can help ensure that we continue on our mission. As a member, you'll receive a range of benefits, including access to exclusive content, invitations to our private events, including here at our studios, free copies of our books, and much, much more, including, of course, our famous NCF mug. If you aren't able to become a member, then 
please help us by clicking this button and subscribing to our channel. It's completely free. Just remember to also click the bell icon so that you can get notifications when we post new videos. Thank you.